you have dropped it, miss? It was in my bag. Are you sure about that? Yes. I went into this tobacco and I bought some cigarettes and some lunch. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yes. Can I ask you? Yes. S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D. Sorry. A-R-D. Yes, I've got Maybe a wall and moved it, sir. Wall is double and dead, but I was gone 20 minutes at most. You I'm were parked in a no waiting zone, so you should have been parked yes, on at all. Yeah, but the so clutch had packed up, wasn't it? I was trying to get help. Was the bag zipped? Oh, no, you want to zip it then? Well, it's not zipped now, miss. It's always been in there. Anything of any value? Look, it's the car I'm bothered about. Yeah, but the car may have been taken because of its contents, and it would help if we knew. Some office equipment. Right, the doors were locked, you say? Yeah, they were. OK, Did I'll take these details down again. But can you... Can you hear them shouting now, madam? Well, could you have left it in the shop? You've been back to ask, have you, miss? An injunction. I haven't seen it. Are you sure you didn't drop it? No. Right, well, I'll punch this out on the computer and uh, see if it's in a pound or anything. I wasn't there long enough for you people to move in. Longer than you thought, sir, maybe. I mean, if the clutch had gone, they need a loader to come and take it away, and there's no way that that's going to take less than a couple of hours, is it? Just one second, please, yeah. See... Seeing if we've got a power of arrest and junction in the name of... Madam, what did you say your neighbour's name was? Fern. Is that F-E-R-N-E? Joyce. Joyce Fern, yeah. OK, just one, just one moment, if you could bear with me for a minute, yeah. Yes, you, yeah, you did absolutely the right thing, Mr Shepherd. Look, Mike. I don't give a monkey's how you do it. Just get hold of the little runt. I want him in here by lunchtime. Yeah, but the beak threw the case out the last time we put him up. On a technicality, it won't happen again. Nicky Tomlinson needs learning a thing or two before it's too late, all right? Right, Gav. Uh, um... Thanks a bunch, Sarge. I was going to go to the match. Over. Well, sounds like another customer. <laughs> <laughs> Keep you busy today. <laughs> Message timed at um, 12.29, Sarge. 101 out. Domestic scrap. Yeah, I know. Avoid him like the pox. Mm. Sarge says he wants a diplomatic inquiry. Sorry about that, Mr. Reed. Oh, well. We'll be on our way. You got my statement? Mm. Tough. And thanks for the couple as well. Oh, any time. Always glad of a bit of company. Yeah, well, we'll hold you to that soon, eh? Oh, right. cheers. Cheers, Gov. Cheers, mate. <sighs> it's Hyde Road. It'd be quick as any a car, wouldn't it? Don't turn up mob hand in the domestic gym, Jen. Yeah, but if they're having a rack, I mean... by the time we get there, it'll all be over. With a bit of luck. Nothing better to do, son. Uh, I'm waiting for uh, Dave, Sarge. <laughs> this thing's on a tea break. Got a better bleeding union than we have. Hey, yup, must have heard me. Did you say it was, sir? GLS. Oh, I've got it. Halfway across town, I suppose. Can't hear nothing. Yeah, probably done each other in. All oh, domestics are a waste of time, Jimmy. First thing they'll say, whoever opens the door, what the bloody hell do you want? Well, what bother sending us in? Why? Because <laughs> I haven't to mention to Sarge that I got a ticket for the first day of law. That's bloody why. <laughs> I told him Glamorgan can't lose, but Sarge just doesn't understand the niceties of cricket. Now, if it were football, mind you. Oh, come off it, Chaffee. He's not like that. Oh, no. There. Ah. Ah, that's a good bloody start. What was the name? Shepherd, with an A. What do you mean, with an A? S-H-E-P-H-A-R-D. Shepard. Ah, we'd better talk to her first, though. She called the name. What's up? Hello? Hello? Mrs. Shepard! Check around the corner, sir. Yeah, that's it. What did I tell you? Nothing. Oh, you've got here, then? We're looking for a Mrs. Shepard, with an A. Oh, I should hope you are. Could have had me throat slit by now. What'd you do? Run a ball the other way? You missed it all. Missed what, madam? I said there'd be trouble. I told her the other day you end up in the bleeding hospital if you don't watch out. Who are we talking about, madam? Well, who'd you think? Her in there, what I rang up about. Well, Joyce, she's gone. Ran out half an hour since after him. Him? Alan, her husband, he had the boy with him. A kiddie? Yeah, only two, poor little mite. Matthew, they called him. 
So what will you do? Well, can you help us, madam? Well, she asked me a special. She said, Ethel, if you hear us having a row, you get the police round fast. I don't want him knocking the kid about. Oh, he's like that, is he, madam? Well, she had this injunction. That's why she was scared. She knew Alan had blow up about it, and he did. Blimey, you should have heard him. Oh, he went a bit potty, did he? I said to her, I said, injunctions was a waste of time, but she knew better. It's what the law's for, Ethel, she said. Don't know nothing, her sort. Oh, yeah? What sort's that, madam? Well, her dad said, Lev, the estate agent. You know, Broad Street. Big car, big house and all, Joy says. Don't go a bundle on Alan. He's been round once in two years. I've never seen her mum. Joyce gives him a call once a week on my phone. Supposed to be close, them families, like Italians, so they tell you. Don't see much of it round here, no mistake. Lunch. You're not here, you're coming up the stairs. Cheers. Look, I just had this call from a panther in Lost on Wine. Life never stops for you, swingers, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't, does it? Yeah, look, it collects pictures. It's got this collection of watercolours by an old biddy called Rachel Mackay. She died about 50 years ago. I've never heard of her. Well, you'd be surprised if you had, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Well, look, they're worth a few, Bob. About four or five hundred quid each. He collects what he can. He's got friends in the business, and they give him the eye when he thinks going. It's just a long story, Robert, only I'm finding it really fascinating. Do you know what I mean? Just get on with your knitting. He's had this uh, catalogue sent to him mm -hmm. for a sale on our ground, and his pictures are listed. And he isn't selling. Doesn't intend selling, never has. And the pictures are still on his wall. So the old dear painted two of everything. Tough. No. Look. Have you seen this catalogue? No, but we're getting it sent round. No, don't involve us, Bob. Shove it back. Tempt to call his own, Nick. Yeah, well, he has, and they seem about as enthusiastic about work as you do, Roy. Well, steady. Look, he's a nervous man. He doesn't know what's going on. He's rung us, he's rung the insurance, he's called the auctioneer, and they're all passing the buck. Thought you might like to join him. Oh, dear. Have you tasted this? No, but I'll give your mother in law the recipe. Oh, cheers. You want a cup of tea? Yeah, come on. Look, I'll get Ted on to it when he's got a moment, all right? It's our ground. Mm -hmm. Up to my neck at the moment. I've got that Tomlinson kid on my back again. Two tea, brother. Oh, is that uh, the one whose old man does the scrap metal? Yeah. Just because his old man's got a lot to go, he thinks he can't be nicked. Anyway, I'll leave that with you, eh? That's a right non-starter. Yeah, look, I tell you what, you crack that and I'll buy you a bit of Gladys' sponge. Cheers. If you don't, I'll buy you two bits. What time was that? It came about 11 o'clock this morning. Yeah. So your husband isn't living with you at the moment? What? He's not living with you. Um, no. He's been coming and going for the last few months. I mean, we started another one of our scenes. I said I was tired of the situation and wanted a divorce. It's been on my mind some time. Anyway. I showed him the injunction, he went off his head. And what sort of injunction is that? It's to stop him assaulting me. He gets rough when he's angry or, or when I upset him. Anyway, he grabbed Matthew, that's my little boy, and ran. He had a car, a blue one. I wasn't ready for that. And I ran after it. It was pointless. And then I came here. <laughs> Look, just a sec. I'm sorry, I haven't got a hanging chair. The tissues, do you know? Yeah. Look, come with me, will you? I'm so sorry. I'm I'm so feel... sorry. that much. Why? Well, we had a phone call earlier on from a neighbour of yours. Ethel? Ethel Shepherd? Mm. She said that you told her to phone us if there was any trouble. Bless her. I didn't think she'd do it. Sorry, she sent a couple of men round. Sorry. No, it's all right. Don't worry about them. Oh. 
Look, I'll fix you a cup of tea. Uh, have you got a key, madam? No. Well, we can't leave the place open. Well, thank you, Mrs. Shepherd. I don't think we need keep you any longer. Oh, got nothing else on. Jim, give the station a call. Fill him in on the situation. Right. In the street, Jim, Jim. You what? Better reception. Oh, yeah. Um, cheers, Mrs. Can you remember anything else about it? It was blue. And it had a T or a Y at the end of the number plate. But it wasn't your husband's car. We've never had one. Anyway, as I said, I was in such a panic, I rang after it. I didn't know what else to do. And then I came here. I don't think we can help you, Mrs. Fone. <sighs> but he's taken my son. It's his son, too. He's still your husband. You haven't started divorce proceedings? No. Well... I know it's a hard thing to say, but it's between the two of you then, isn't it? But then, our Sarge, the house door and the flat door were both open on arrival. Um, a neighbour says Mrs Fern ran out after her husband and child, over. Yeah, all right, Jim. Leave it to me, the lady's here. Not there. She's there, Sarge, over. Yeah, affirmative. June's talking to her, over. Blimey, Sarge, now what? Forgive, Jim, Jim. I've just been on to the Sarge and uh, Mrs Fern's there at the Nick. All right, uh, get them to ask her if she's got her keys on. She's left all the bloody doors open. If she has, we can just drop the latch and leave her to it. Might even make the match with a bit of luck. 600, two uniform, Oscar. Um, Sarge, could you ask the lady if she's still got her keys with her, over? Be all right, Jim, I'll come back to you. Come back to us. Right, well, you hang on here. Uh, the neighbours have heard enough already. Our Mrs Shepherd's got ears like a frigging bat. Right, there you are. Uh, June's got a woman in there. Why don't you run down the line road for me, OK? All right, Right, love. I've got a car for you. The WPC will take you on back home. Yeah, I'll get my bags. Right. I've asked my officers to stay on there. All right, make sure everything's OK. And what about Matthew? Well, I'm sure the WPC's explained the situation to you. To be honest, there's very little we can do. Oh, come on. Of course there is. Do you know where your husband's living now? What? Oh, what about his parents? Are they still around? I don't know. I don't speak to them, I'm afraid. But you've got a telephone number and address. Well, they're not on the phone, as far as I know. But they might know where he is. I mean, you must keep in touch with them. Well, I don't know. I imagine so. Well, like I said, I really can't put the little boy up to the missing persons list, can I? Especially if he's with his dad. But he is missing, isn't he? I mean, that's the whole point. I want him back. That's why I came to you. I'm not leaving it like this. I'm not being pushed away. It will sort itself out, believe me. Well, how can you say that? You know nothing about no, it. Mrs. Fan, if there was anything more we could do, believe me, we'd do it. Look, I want it. Matthew, you must understand. I, I want that. my son. I think the best thing all around is if you go home. Oh, really? Well, ten to one. Once he's thought about it, he'll realise how silly he's been. She's right, madam. He'll call off and come to his senses. Could be at home waiting for you now with a bit of luck. Two. Sir? When you get back there, have a look at the front, make things all right, right? Sarge, whatever you do, son, never get involved in domestics. Social services were around this morning before the court officer. Who did they talk to? June Ackland. Oh, usual noises. They don't want us any more involved than we have to be. The collator have the injunction on file? No, we didn't know anything about it before yesterday. Even then, there's nothing we can do. Well, you can't stop a man running off with his own child. There wasn't an exclusion order? No. Straight personal protection. No power of arrest. This uh, ward of court business. Your idea, Bob? Oh, no way, sir. As far as I can tell, it wasn't Mrs. Fern's either. Apparently, your father applied for it. In. Morning, Ashland. Yes, sir. What have we got? 
Well, Alan Fern's known to the probation service, sir, and has a record of violence. The general feeling is that the child could be in danger. Apparently, it's even worse when he comes under pressure. Especially from us, you mean? Well, from anyone, sir, but us especially, yes. You've no idea where he is? No, sir. None at all. I'll get a couple of lads on which, sir. Social services did ask They'll that be around to clear up afterwards, will they? Well, you know the scorn. It's their field, not ours. Never mind the scorn. There's a kid involved here, sir. Yes, I know that, Roy. We should follow normal procedure for the time being. Let the WPCs handle it as far as they can, all right? Very well, sir. I'll get on if that's all right. I've got a lot on my plate, plus a school visit. I'm not asking you to keep out of it, Roy. I'm just saying that we should send WPC Ackland round to talk to the boy's mother and take it from there, yes? Right, sir. Have you spoken to the mother yet? Not since yesterday, sir. I was waiting till we had this meeting. Clearly, I'd expect you to handle the man if and when he's found. You and Bob can work together on that, okay? If I may say so, sir, the point is, as of yesterday, we want to touch this case. Now we know something else. Fern is a headbanger. No one has said that, Roy. Is there any evidence he's ever assaulted the child? No, sir, but it's well on the cards. Well, let's not jump in before we need to. We get too heavy-handed, we're going to create the very situation we're trying to avoid. Now, WPC, you go around and talk to the mother again, right? See if anything's changed, you may have heard something by now. Sure. Bob, you liaise with Roy, okay? Right, sir. Oh, and tell them downstairs to keep the press out of it, will you? Yeah, of course. I get enough stick over this as it is without giving the panic mongers chapter in those. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Bye, sir. I bought you a couple, love. Don't suppose you've done nothing for yourself, have you? Come in. I won't stop. Have you heard nothing? He's not been round? No. Nope. Are the coppers? Useless lot. What can they do? We'll find your husband, that's what. They're not even looking for him. He's run off with his own son, Ethel. It's not a crime. If they'd got here sooner yesterday, it wouldn't have happened. He'd have tried again. Time it took him, I could have crawled to the nick and back on my hands and knees. <gasps> oh, come and have a sit, love. Come on. Now that can wait. Come on, <laughs> drink your tea now. I was watching Matthew's things for something to do. I'm sorry. Oh, you ain't nothing to apologise for. You're a good mother and a good wife. And if he hasn't seen that bigger fool in. Oh, oh, oh love. Oh, my baby. I know. So he said, Tom, mate, he says, what's the damage? And the brief said to him, now look, son, I'm glad I got you off that one. I could see you were innocent, and that's okay by me. Oh, <laughs> That's not the half of it. Do you know what the snout said to him? He said, I'll leave it out, mate. He says, I've got me pride. I'll tell you what I'll do with it. I'll split my share up with you, half and half. <laughs> oh, What's the matter with you today? You on the curry again last night? No. Well, where's Mike? He's in there. Mike, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. I'm on my way to pick up Tom Winston's mate, though. Forget about it. Listen. There's a bloke called Alan Fern. He made away with his little kid yesterday. Grabbed him right in front of his missus. Oh, I'm not a domestic. Oh, we're not into them now, are we, Cuff? We're into this one. Look, the kid's been made a ward of court. Fern's violence. I want you to check with CRO. See what they know on him, OK? After that, have words in the front office. See who's doing what. Don't you plonks are calling the shots. They give you all that low profile spill. But don't worry about that. I want this headbanger nabbed before we end up on the dirty end of an official inquiry. All right? Okay. See you, boy. We're in peace these days. No, oh, mate. The force has gone to the dogs. Don't forget to wash your hands. Mm. Oh, God, man. Where will you be if we want to have a word? Well, uh, first of all, I've got to go downstairs and sort out that Broom Road car panel business. What's that? Well, a bloke came in here yesterday for a car that wasn't his, and somebody downstairs bought his con. Sent him out of the pound. Oh, very nice. After that, I'm off to school. London Road, comprehensive. What, to give one of your pet talks? Yeah, I can't say no. We had masters on the bench. Look, get after that firm geezer, OK? But tread carefully. The super doesn't want anyone to know we're involved, all right? OK, good. Oh, Dove! What about Tomlinson, lad? Well, don't worry about it. Then we've got to keep it guessing. Talk about rabbit. He never stops, does he? It's his privilege, mate. He's the governor. Yeah, the social worker's been. She said she was on her way to you. I don't know. Well, uh... 
I'll leave you to it then, Joycey. Thanks. I hope you've got a bit more now, so Emma, for two. Look, I'll wash your cup up when you when I've finished with it. All right. Well, there's no hurry. Um, and give us a shout, anything you want. Oh, and the phone's always there. You know that. Thanks. We'll see you later, love. Yeah, you've been lovely. Oh, thanks. See you. Have you heard from your husband at all, Mrs. Fan? No. Presumably you've talked to your parents. Well, not since yesterday. I've tried. There's no one at home and my father's not in the office, so his secretary says. Yeah, but you do know about the ward of court order. Well, the social worker said it. Yeah. Did she explain to you what it meant? Well, she mentioned a hearing. I didn't understand that at all. Oh. Well, as soon as the application was lodged, your son became a ward. There we are. It just means there's no red tape. Ports and airports can be blocked immediately. Waiting for a hearing can take months. But they'll still have to be one. Not if things get straightened out. Yeah. Well, the order's scrapped automatically after 21 days, unless it's extended. Not for this before. Yeah, I'm talking about the average looking and useful description. Oh, I didn't get that good a look at him, you know. Grey suit and glasses. And you reckon his name's Dixon? No, Cav, that's what he reckoned. I beg your pardon? Hang on. Good to do, sir. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Yeah, Dixon. Lionel Dixon. You see, the thing is, the car pound tells me that the car belongs to someone else. What do you mean? Well, Swansea's come up with a different name. That's what I mean. Maybe I had it or borrowed it. Well, maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. Little Dave. Come on, Sergeant. Sorry, Jim. Shut the door, Dave. Look, didn't you get an address while he was ill or some kind of identification? Oh, what for? Well, to cover yourself, that's what for. I mean, chances are you wouldn't have got the truth, but you might have slipped up. Look, Gov, I did it by the book, right? A bloke comes in and he tells me his car's been nicked. I thought it might be down the pound since he parked it on double yellows. He said the clutch had gone and he had to leave it, go and get some help, right? And they've always got some excuse. Anyhow, I tried it on the computer, right? And there it is, large as life. Right reg, right colour, right make, right everything. I'm sure. Except number one. This bloke who calls himself Dixon turns up at the car pound in a cab and says he needs the contents of the car urgently be back for the car later. Number two, the contents of that car happen to belong to Settler and Company, a solicitors of this manner. Number three, the car is owned by a potato merchant in Manchester who is not called Dixon and is not the con artist who came in here yesterday. And number four, I don't like it. When a uniformed sergeant from the car pan who's never caught a villain in his life rings me up and tells me one of my boys has made an almighty cock up. I'm sorry, Gov, I didn't know, did I? Did you ask him what was in the car? Yeah. And what did he say? Office equipment. That's right. Two computers, a printer, two coloured monitors, and an electronic typewriter, all brand spanking new. Still in their boxes. Look, Gov, a bloke comes in and reports his car stolen. You don't automatically think, oh, no, you won't be it's not me, do you? It don't make sense. You should have known. Felt something, Dave. Look, that's what makes the difference between a good detective and a bad one. That's what it's all about. That is why I approved your application for CID. Now, you let me down. You're going to have to sharpen yourself up if you want to make a department. Understand? Yes, Gov. Right. On your bike. You all right, Dave? Yeah, yeah. Roy! thought I was there. Hello, are we Sergeant Roach, Chris? OK, go. I was there and they did absolutely properly. The bloke was straight enough as far as you can tell just by looking. It's not to do with that, Bob. The boy wants to come into the department. He's got to show something extra, a little bit different. Yeah, I understand that, but we are talking about procedure here. I don't give a toss about procedure. I'm talking about catching criminals. Yeah, I know you are. But look, while he's down here, he does it by the book. That way he's safe. Might be a bit different when he gets upstairs with you. Well, thank you very much. I'm just off to see an headmaster. I'm going back to school. Ta la! I'll check with the DHSS and I'll meet you back here. Okay, mate. 
Say what, in about five minutes or so? No, more like an hour. Okay, I'll go and get a cuppa. Then we find the old man, this old lady, let's play with it. I'll see you later. Okay, mate. Okay. Well, didn't your father discuss it with you first? You don't discuss things with my father. He tells you what he's decided. How do you want your tea? Oh, as it comes. Do it sugar? No time. Mm. Yeah. Look, it's simple. My husband, Alan, he's not a Jew. And what's worse, he's from the wrong kind of social background. I used to meet him in the afternoons instead of going to college. My bit of rough. different then. He was different. Anyway, mother wouldn't have him in the house. She's right, of course. No one comes rougher than Alan. But I got pregnant. I was stubborn, determined to prove my parents wrong. I'm sorry, you've heard it all before. You can't be interested. Look, what I am interested in, Mrs Fern, is interfering as little as possible. I don't want to make things any worse than they already are. Oh, how could they be worse? Well, have you heard from your husband's parents at all? I understand they live locally. I've never met them. Oh, I think they feel the same way about me as my parents do about Alan. You don't happen to have their address on you, do you? Well, somewhere. I'd be grateful if you could find it. Yeah, all right, um, I don't know. I don't know. I've got a box. Mrs Fern, I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but has your husband ever been violent towards your son? Yeah. Yes, he has. Mum and Dad. Oh, yes, madam. Listen, miss, I don't have to tell you nothing. Condescending bitch, ain't you? Not intended, madam, I assure you. Well, nowhere else for him. Well, what makes you say that? He told me a thing or two, didn't he? Well, he couldn't speak to his missus. Ah, oh, poor Joycey. They was worlds apart, them two. Didn't speak the same language. Well, it's not his fault, not hers. Yeah. Just telling you for the kiddies' sake, it's little Matthew what'll suffer. They always do, don't they, kids? Pull this way and that. Thank you, madam. Here, you'll follow it up, then. Well, it's not entirely up to me, madam, but I'll certainly pass the information on. Thank you again. Now, with our luck, there won't be anybody in. Ah, um, Mr. Fern? Yeah. yeah. We're police officers. Yeah. So, detect uh, could we have a word with you about your son, Alan? Alan? Yeah. Uh, could we step inside for a couple of minutes? What about Alan? Only his eight. No need, is there? Well, we could talk more easily. Are they one, Harry? Alan. Just want a few words with you about your son, Mrs. Fern. Uh, what's it to talk about him? Did you know that he'd gone missing, madam, with his son? That's his business, isn't it? Oh, it's his son, isn't it? How can he go missing with his own son? Have you heard from him no. at all? No. Do you know where he's living? No. Just... We don't know nothing about him. Don't want him either. And what about you, Mr. Fern? What about me? What he does is his business. I can't tell you nothing.
as you can see, uh, another uh, can I help? thing about it is that there's a garage. Yes. Uh, could I wear them, please, sir? Uh, no. It's a personal matter, actually. Oh, yes, there are several. Come through. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's a jewel. What personal matter is this, then, officer? Uh, it's about your daughter and grandson, Mr. Leather. How are you involved? Your daughter's been to see us, sir. I understood the police keep out of domestic problems. Well, we prefer to as much as possible. A ward of court order, however, makes it a bit more difficult. Sit down. Thank you. This is just routine, then. I'm not sure I have anything to say to you. The court's in control of the boy now, not his parents. Realistically speaking... But it seems to me there's even less reason to bring you in. Being realistic, Mr. Leather, whoever has custody has control. Well, of course, that's and true, but... I understood but... that the basis of your High Court application was that your son-in-law was violent. Has been, yes. In which case, whatever the legal situation, Matthew could be in danger. It would be best all round if we found him and his father. They're neither of them here, officer. <laughs> well, we wondered if you had any idea at all as to where they might be. Do you really think I wouldn't have told the authorities already if I had the slightest inkling? You haven't seen or heard from Mr. Fern in the last couple of weeks? I've not had any contact with that man for some time. And he hasn't been in touch since he took the boy? No, he has not. He knows the belittle point. I want nothing to do with him. You see, his parents don't seem to have had much contact with him either. They haven't seen him for some time. Apparently, he's unemployed, but he hasn't signed on for benefits, so he hasn't registered a new address. It's very difficult to know where to start. I can't tell you how to do your job. No, sir. Mr. Leather, do you mind if I ask you why you didn't tell your daughter what you had in mind about the court order? Oh, I think that's my business, don't you? She's very upset about it, sir. You see, she won't leave the flat in case her husband turns up again. No, listen. And yet she tells me that she has not been able to get through to you to talk about it, either here or at your home. I can't see that this is relevant to your inquiries. If there is maybe a situation in the background, sir, that we all... The only background situation, officer, is that Alan Fern has got my grandson. When you were there, would you have done any different? You must lead a dead quiet life, you. Eh? Flipping yesterday all this happened and you're still going on. You know what Galloway's like. He's a right little ginger-haired ferret. Anyway, there's no harm done. Why'd you make that one out? Roachie told us, when they asked Dixon for identification, he reckoned the car key was enough. Oh, nice. <laughs> they didn't think so. He said he'd have to bring something else in. They're not daft, aren't they, family? So he didn't get away with again, eh? Nah. He hasn't been seen since, neither. But well, why couldn't Galloway tell me all this? Well, he didn't know himself until he went down to Chatham up. Uh... He jumped to conclusions, hadn't he? All Brum Road wanted was a trace on our map. Oh, which reminds me, when has he found that kid yet, the Fern kid? Are they still looking for him? You must sleep on parade or what? No, Dixon, are they still looking for him? Oh, I can't get my breath. I'll tell you what, I'll walk on the other side of the street until you can think of something else to talk about, all right? Leave it out. Next time, give me a shout. I'll try and call the WPC. Well, I'll send you out with a bloke. Anything wrong with doing all that? Right. Sir, any news of the phone, boy? No, not as yet. What's Roy up to? Waiting on us, as far as I can tell. We're all waiting, it seems. Any news from social services? No, not since June Acton spoke to them yesterday. I reckon they're keeping their heads well down. Oh, I'm blaming. <laughs> well, that sounds a load of trouble. Uh, Mrs. Fern did mention him taking off in a blue car. She thought it had a T or a Y reg. I've got traffic in their eye out for it. Usual needles in the Yeah, that's about it, sir. All right. All right, bye. My daughter is infatuated with a man who, in every way, is unsuited to her. A lifestyle, a culture, a religion. And frankly, the whole of our family. Isn't that her business, sir? No, Constable, it is not. We're Orthodox Jewish. We're proud of it. We're proud of our religion and our traditions. Fortunately, my grandson is a Jew because his mother is whatever his father. Whatever his father may be. Even if she's given up the faith, nothing can change that. Unfortunately, her obsession has blinded her to the man's nature. 
If I hadn't acted, she'd have agreed to anything. She may even have done so already. Oh, that isn't the impression she gave me, Look, I sir. think I know my daughter rather better than you do. I'm sure you do, sir. Surely I'm... you can't believe this nonsense about Fern taking the boy and making a run for it? Why, sir? What do you suggest happened? Not what she appears to have told you. But, Mr. Leather, social man services, is not trustworthy. your daughter's name... He's irresponsible. He's thoroughly unreliable. He's frequently subjected Joyce to physical violence, and he's quite capable of doing the same to the boy. My sole wish is to save her from herself and to give my grandson the upbringing he's so far been denied. Well, that's why there's a court order. <laughs> this lunch was here. The woman's out of it. Oh, you're kidding. No, um, straight up. The best bowler has gone off the tall hamstring. Oh, yeah, and the rest. <laughs> anyway, look, when you've had your break, I want you to go down to London Road Comprehensive. See, I do reckon there's a drug pusher on those. I've been telling them that for months. Yeah, cheap heroin. I thought it was only glue wrappers. Oh, no, not anymore, son. Anyway, look, wave the flag now and then for the next week or two, all right? Yeah, oh, Sarge, any news on that missing kid? No, uh, not a whisper. Hey, what will happen, Taff? We had a kid, I mean. We can't just leave it, can we? Nothing we can do, Ginger. Even if we wanted to. No, I'll best leave it to the boys upstairs, eh? Boy, Chef, it's just come through. They're three nil down at the half time. Oh, yeah. And, and the wicket keeper fell at the service, of course. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll take a look. Yeah, cheers, mate. That was traffic. Mm -hmm. British Rail have been on. They've got a car parked in the station yard. Dropped a bit hasty by the look of things. Been there a couple of days and they're getting complaints. Why is that? Obstruction. You gonna go down there? Yeah, I've got ten minutes. I might as well take a look. Okay, then, mate. Actually, I think I'll come with you. I'm fed up with this bloody typing anyway. Jenny, do us a favour, will you? Finish off that report for me. Marvellous. What colour is it then? Blue? Yeah. T registration? No, X. Fleming red herring. Blue Ted. Blue herring. Oh, very good. <laughs> Seen Will Galloway, love? No, Sarge. Why? Is he looking for me? No, I'm looking for him. Ah. August the 7th. Oh. How'd you get on with the girl's father? Well, I know why he went to court. That's about all. Why's that? Wants to make sure the kid's brought up Jewish, doesn't he? Oh, get on with you. Yeah, honestly. And how does he think that's going to work out? <laughs> Don't ask me. Well, the court will give him back to his mum as soon as we find him. If we find him. Well, after that, it's up to her. I ask you. What? Religion? It's all about love and peace. Yeah, you say that again. My dad was Catholic. Should have heard him and my mum going on sometimes. Worse than alley cats, they were, the pair of them. Oh, well, you could do it then. Yeah, okay then, mate. Uh, you'll get it moved, will you? Traffic lights will be along. Uh, it's a right pain stuck there. We'll maybe want to talk to one of your ticket men a little later on, okay? Anything you like. Thanks. Market Brian. Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Let's leave him be. Yeah. Man with a young child, probably in a hurry. Could have stuck in your mind. Good. Thanks. Great help, mate. Look, I'm not interested in faces or how many flaming kids they've got. I'm here to collect fares and hand out tickets, right? Terrific. Talk to Alf on the barrier. He's a nosy son, more your soul. Come again, will you? Foxy traffic's down in a country of wood. That's for who? What's he then? 
Right, uniform, Oscar, will do. What's the current in? Well, it's a disturbance down Hill Estate. Bloody hooligans, all let them go on with it. There's kids coming through here all day. I don't know who they are. This one's little, about two years old. He's been with his father. In hurry? Could be, yeah. What time of day? Oh, late morning, early afternoon, who knows? There was a bloke on the 132 Cannon Street, didn't have no ticket. Came here in him carrying this kid, bawling its head off. Jumped on just as he was pulling out. I yelled at the guard. It looked like the bloke was going to take a perler. But he made it. Is there anything I can tell you? Cannon Street? That's where she was running in. But he could have got off before. Great, thanks. Well, they're going quiet now, you're here. It's always the same, isn't it? Quite a scrap then, was it, Mr. Earl? Blue murder, you ask me. Well, she'll tell you. She reckons they done each other in. Hang about, there we go. Well, one of them's breathing anyhow. So who is she? Kate Fern. Well, it's her flat. Her and her old man's. Fern? Yeah. They've been here longer than I have. Yeah? So what's she doing in your place? Oh. It wasn't her in a punch up then. <laughs> Get out of it. No way, mate. She done a bunk. Locked him in and all. Locked who in? Don't ask me. Some bloke they got up there. We'd best have a word. Yeah. Here. Who's this blue motor? Harry's. Harry Ferns. Bleeding old banger. Makes more smoke than down the power station. Well, Harry said he'd had enough of Alan and the kid. He said we wasn't going to look after him no more. And he told him clear off out of it. And that's when the fight started? Well, they're all his fault. Bleeding Alan's bone fighting. How did you get out then, love? How? Well, I walked out, didn't I? Get hold of the kid and left him. Slaughtering each other. Dull, stupid pair. How long's your boy been up there, then? Why? That's just a question. That's all you ever do, ask questions. You're better off sorting what's happened. Right. They've been there three days, haven't they? Shutting the toilet when you lot come yesterday. Uh, come with us, will you? What are you all for? You need this key. So, I told you she locked him in. Yeah, well, stay here, all right. Oh, don't fret yourself. I'm not running off. Yeah, well, best stay here. When are you ready, mate? Look, I'm not getting into nothing. I'm not paid for any of this. Yes, I know, but... Dave, you just wait until I've whistled up assistance. Yes, Yeah, and then there'll be another one if you go in without any backup. Now, you just wait. Mrs Shepherd? Um, it's WPC Ackland here from Sunhill Police Station. Could I have a word with Mrs Fern if she's there, please? Yes, I will. Thanks a lot. you better let the court office know straight away, June. already spoke, the Sarge. Well done. Has anyone seen Ted or Mike? Yes, they're following up a blue car parked at the railway station. Phone car. Good lads. You're too late, Roy. They've already found him. What, the kid? Well, the father, anyway. Where? In his mother's. He's been there all along. What do you mean that his mother's all along? It's the first place we checked. Yeah, but it depends on who's doing the checking, know what I mean? Uniform Oscar to Uniform 330. Is Fern putting it about? Yeah, is he? And now Lytton wants to get in there and give him some, doesn't he? Yes. Can I have a WPC? Um, yeah, all right, Susan, when you've done that, eh, go with the inspector. You get your gear, love. I'll see you in my car, all right? Uniform Hello, Oscar. Hello, Mrs Fern. Uniform 330. Listen, June Ackland here. Matthew's safe. Yes. Uniform Frank, proceed to Block 3, Hill Estate. Rendezvous with Dave and Tony. Alan Fern known to be present in the building. Assistance required. I can see you there. You must think I'm stupid. You dead. Bloody idiot. You don't want to come through it. Excuse me, sir. We got Fern. Got him? Good as. And the boy? He's safe. Where's your man? <laughs> Hiding with his family. I thought we'd inquired there. Well, they were keen on protecting him then. Something must have upset the apple cart. So what's happening? Well, we're bringing them in any time, sir. 
Well done. You're at social services now, will you? June Ackman's on to that now. Good. Well, damn good thing that little was over. <laughs> All right, Bird, cut that out! This is the police, we're coming in! You've got no right! Is there an injured man in there? We're coming in there, okay? Where's the kid? Inside. Go on, love. See him again, it'll suit me. And that goes for the pair of them, I'm telling you. It's the car. Oh, oh I lost your tongue now. Oh, yeah. Bastard. Oh, look, look, look who's here. Oh, Matthew. Hello. Thank you. That's all right, it's fine. All part of the service. Oh, you're staying here with my Things. Uh, that fraud squad have been on about the Ross and White job. I thought I told you to pass it back. Yeah, I did. But apparently you missed out the smart little ring there. What's the other thing? Dixon! Chummy with the reported stolen car, remember him? What about him? Car pounds just been on. Apparently him and his mate had it away with all the gear about Avon's Ford this morning. I thought the car was knackered. The clutch had gone or something. Yeah, it was. They nicked the one part next to it. Oh, dear. I <laughs> love it. Hello, Hello. Phil Dane. Speaking about cars... I think Dave Lennon deserves a pat on the back, don't you? What for? Well, if he hadn't made the connection with Harry Fern's car, we'd never have sussed the situation on the estate. I hate to use his eyes, isn't he? Oh, come on. Credit where credit's due. You led us to the kid. Yeah, well, you tell him in the future have more now when people come in claiming their car's been stolen, all right? Well, so the car pound and lose them again. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Sarge? Right. Uh, Leary's ready to go to Paddington, Sarge. Um, Shall I go as escort? Yeah, all right, but don't make it into a lunch hour, all right? Would well, I, Sarge? Yes, you would. Sarge, DPP's on the line. Do you want a word? Uh, yeah, all right. Put it through to my desk. It looks like we've got a new team of dippers on the high street, Sarge. Mm -hmm. right, well, it was Hello. on the center. Hello, Sandra, please, thank you. Can I help you? 